So this is a continuation of what we have discussed uh, in the last session related to completing a ray and the wave diagrams. The critical angle is 43. So it means when angle of incidence is 43, the angle of refraction will be 90. Figure 6.1 shows two monochromatic lights uh, on entering the pressure. We have to complete the path. So if the critical angle is 42, here, the angle is less than the critical angle, so there will be a refraction. Here, again, 42 is there, so this angle is also less than the critical, there will be a refraction. If it was 43, then the angle of refraction will be 90. If it was more than 43, then there will be total internal re reflection. So when the angle of the incidence is equal to critical angle, the light will travel along the boundary or 90 degree to the normal. But because the critical angle is uh, 43, as in the mentioned in the question, the critical angle is 43. But here this angle of incidence is 42. So if angle of incidence is less than the critical angle, then simple refraction. Here also angle of incidence is 30, which is less than the critical angle. So simple refraction. If it was equal to critical, angle of incidence equivalent to critical, then the angle of refraction should be 90. And if the angle of incidence more than critical, then there will be a total internal reflection. So we have to show a simple refraction here, both cases, but refraction at an angle of incidence 42 will be more than 30. Figure 7.1 shows a monochromatic red light, which is incident on a glass at an angle of 50. Without measuring the angles, use a ruler to draw approximate path of a ray in a glass and emerging. So when it moved from air to glass, it bent toward the normal. So if this was the direction in which the ray wave was traveling, then it will bend towards the normal and slow down. Moving from glass to air, it will bend away from the normal. So when we draw the normal, which is perpendicular to the surface. So it will bend away from the normal. And as it bend away from the normal, the two light rays, the one which enter and the one which leave should be parallel to each other. Then in question 37, figure 6.1 shows an object in front of a plane mirror. The two light rays which are reflected from the object are shown. On figure 6.1, draw a normal. So we have to draw the normal of figure 6.1 for one of the rays shown, draw a normal. So we just have to draw, normal is always perpendicular to the surface. So this will be the normal, then mark an angle of incidence and label that as X. So angle of incidence is actually the angle between the incident and the normal. So this is the incident and this one is a normal. So this is angle of incidence we can mark as X. Then the next part, draw on figure, the reflected ray for both and construct and locate the image. Look, whenever you have a plane mirror, how to draw image formed by a plane mirror, as we know, the plane mirror, the object distance and image distance are always equal. Basically, what is happening when the two light rays, the two light rays which are from the object strike the mirror bounce back. And as a result, when we produce them backward, as a result, like when we are looking from here, our brain says light is coming straight from the object, so it relocate. And when it relocate, that is the position where the image is formed. But for exam point of view, how to do this type of question, image formed by a plane mirror, the best way without any calculation, because we know the object distance and image distance will always be equal. So we measure the distance of object from the mirror and same distance will make it here and same position. Uh, so 15 boxes are there. So we make an image. Now draw the two rays 
from the image. And then at the last, just draw an eye. So this is what happened. The two light rays which strike the mirror bounce back, enter the eye. As a result, when it enter the eye, our brain relocate this position. So this is a position where we'll get an image. So best way to draw image by a plane mirror, always draw the image, draw the two lines from the image to the eye and then just complete the diagram from object to the mirror to show how image is formed. On figure 6.2, circular wavefronts from a point source in a tank, the reflected wavefronts seem to come out from a single point. On a figure, mark a dot and draw accurately the reflected wavefront. So what happened? How we draw the reflected wavefront? So these are the reflected wavefronts after striking. And from which point it appears they are coming out? So this is a pair that is coming out from this side. We don't have to draw an arrow. We just have to mark a point where it appears that we these reflected wavefronts are coming out. So it appeared that these reflected wavefronts are coming out from this point. So whenever circular wavefronts strike a plane barrier, as a result, it will be again a spherical or a circular wavefront bounce back. In space below, draw a ray diagram to locate image of an object which is having a height of one centimeter, placed five centimeter from a convex lens of focal length two centimeter. So what we do for these type of questions, draw a full scale diagram means accurately you have to measure all the distances. So first we'll draw a principal axis. Then we'll mark the position of the lens on the principal axis and draw a vertical line. Then from the lens measure the distance to mark the focus uh, focal length. As I mentioned, uh, the focal length is two centimeter. So from the lens, we'll measure two centimeter, that will be F. And again, on the right-hand side, we'll measure two centimeter F. Further two centimeter, double of the focus, that is two F, and double of the focus, that is also two F. Then the object is placed five centimeter away from the lens. So either left or the right-hand side, we can place an object. And it is one centimeter height. So Object is five centimeter from the lens and the height of the object is one centimeter. Now how to locate an image formed by this? So first we draw a parallel light ray, a light ray which is parallel to the principal axis that will pass through the focus. So first one parallel light ray will always pass through the focus and the second one through the center of the lens will pass straight. So the position, the point where the two light rays will intersect, that is the position where the image is formed. And re this is always a real image because it is formed by intersection of the lines. So real images which are formed by a convex lens are on opposite side of the object. They are always inverted. So if they ask what is the characteristic, so we have to label this image as I. And what are the characteristic of the image? It is always real because in and it is inverted. Real images by a convex lens are always inverted. And when we compare the size of object with the size of image, so it is small. So these are the characteristic of the image formed by a convex lens. So this question is always done with an accurate measurement. So you should use a ruler and measure all the distances. Then the box contain two identical prisms, one which is shown the light incident on prism one undergo total internal reflection. On figure 7.1, complete the path. So we have to complete a path here. First, because this ray of a light is passing straight, uh, it's passing along the normal, so it will pass straight. 
why it does not change the direction because light is passing along the normal then when we draw the normal here which is perpendicular as i mentioned it will undergo total internal reflection so it should bounce back in the same dense medium so it will bounce back in the same dense medium and then it will strike and undergo a total internal reflection in the second prism and then it will go out we have to draw the position of the second prism how it happened so the second prism so the light should also undergo total internal reflection to so strike the denser boundary so this is how the second prism is placed that's how the periscope works that when the light strikes the first prism it undergo total internal reflection and it strike the second prism it also undergo total internal reflection and a person will see the object figure 5.1 shows six wave fronts which are traveling on the surface of a deep water we have to complete a path to show in shallow so shallow water it travels slower so how to complete a path for a ray look if it is traveling with the same if it was traveling with the same speed we will draw in the same line if it was traveling faster it should be ahead but because in a shallow water it travels slower so it should lag behind and the remaining wave front should be parallel to each other so this is what happened when the wave traveling from deep to shallow the speed of the wave the frequency remain constant the speed and the wavelength both decreases so for a water wave moving from deep to shallow this will happen if it was shallow to deep then opposite will happen figure 7.1 shows a converging lens and a principal axis the points label f each uh, principal focus on figure draw two rays from top of the object to locate image so how to locate an image first the parallel light ray will pass through the focus one through the optical center the center of the lens will pass straight the point the position where the two light rays will meet or intersect that is the position where the image will form so the position or the point where these two light rays will intersect this is the position where we will get an image this will be a real inverted and a larger image than the object you can select another ray or two are enough but there is if you want to draw there will be third one from the focus passing through the focus will go parallel so they will all intersect at one point same point then figure 7.2 shows a path of a red light through a glass prism you have to draw a green one remember the web gear you have uh, violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red where violet bends the most and red will bends the least so this is a path the ray of a green light enter the prism and it follow the same path as red so red light path is shown we have to draw for green so because green is here so compared to red green will bend more so if we want to complete a path for a green it will bend more than red so this will be the approximate path which we will draw if they ask to draw approximate for path for the violet it will bend more than green so depending on the question which one uh, they ask to complete for red will bends the least and violet bends the most the wave in air is incident on a glass block shows a wave front at air and glass boundary the arrow shows the direction of the wave front the wave front undergo a reflection and refraction so moving from air to glass we have to complete the wave front for reflection and refraction both 
So for first for reflection, for when we complete the path, the direction in which the rays and uh, moving. So this is the direction in which the rays, the wave is traveling. Imaginary line which is perpendicular to the surface that is normal. So when it undergo a reflection, for example, this arrow in the red is representing the reflected. So how to draw the wavefront? Wavefronts, remember, are always perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travel. So this is the direction in which the wave travel. So we'll draw the wavefronts perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travel. Then it moved from air to glass. So moving from air to glass, because the speed of the light decreases, so it's slowed down. Now we have to draw the wavefront to show the refraction, the refracted wavefront. The direction of the wavefront and direction of wave are always perpendicular, 90 degrees. So when we complete the remaining of these wavefronts, you can complete here as well. So one is the refracted one. And whenever any drawing question is there, it should always label. So this one is a refracted. And here is a reflected. So reflected and refracted wavefronts according to the question. A loudspeaker is placed at a considerable distance to the left of a barrier with a gap. Width of a gap is double the wavelength. Like this gap size is twice of the wavelength. So if this is four centimeter, means wavelength will be two centimeter. We have to complete the diffracted. On the figure, sketch a diagram that represents a sound wave as a series of wavefront traveling towards the barrier in the gap and away from the gap. So these are the wavefronts which we will draw. But as they already mentioned, the wavelength, the distance between the two successive uh, wavefronts is smaller as compared to the gap. So when it will pass through the barrier, there will be a diffraction, but small amount of diffraction. Why small diffraction? Because when the gap size is more than the wavelength, a small quantity or small proportion of the wave diffracted. So this is how we will draw a small diffraction. Keep one thing in mind that the wavelength, the distance between the wavefront which you draw before it enter and one it passes through should be equal. Like this distance should be equal to this one. And according to the question with the measurement, this distance is twice as the wavelength. So if this was four centimeter, then wavelength should be two centimeter. So larger gap, there's a small difference. Then figure 5.2 shows a section of a fiber optic or optical fiber a ray of a light incident at X on a figure continue. So in fiber optic or optical fiber, light, light will undergo total internal reflection. So light strike and return back. But don't draw too many reflections, then this will be wrong. If you draw it in, in this manner, whenever you're drawing, showing the uh, reflection through the optical fiber or fiber optic, Minimum number, like example, one, two, you should just show even twice and then it should return. It should emit out or go out from the other side. And we can use this optical fiber or fiber optics in, for, in a medicine, medical field as well, like endoscopy, as well as transmitting the data or information from one place to another, like carrying the information in the form of light, which we use to use in internet. 
the blue light enters the prism along the same path as yellow on the figure we have to draw the path for a blue light so again you have violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red where violet will bend the most and red will bend the least so you have yellow one of the colors yellow and now you want to this is a yellow light you have to draw for a violet which should bend the most so when we complete the path so we should show more bending compared to that of yellow and if they ask complete a path for the red so it should have less bending compared to that of yellow so red will bend the least and the violet will bend the most figure 6.1 shows a crest of a wave in a sea as it reaches the end the entrance to a harbor the wave reaches the gap in a harbor and passes through a harbor draw three successive crests how to identify whether it is maximum diffraction or minimum so you have to measure the gap the distance between the wave uh, successive wave fronts which is the wavelength and the gap size so you can see here the gap size is larger than the wavelength so if gap size is larger than the wavelength then small amount of a wave will diffract so small diffraction we should represent and another thing which you should keep in mind is the gap if they say this is 2 cm so you should draw a wave front also 2 cm apart but a small diffraction as the gap size is larger or bigger than the wave front wavelength then in this question shows a crest of a wave approaching a barrier where it, uh, the wave is reflected on a figure you have to draw the reflected wave front so this wave will strike imaginary line always draw the normal where the wave strike the boundary imaginary line which is perpendicular to the surface that is normal and angle of incidence and angle of reflection should be equal so wave will bounce back in this manner and to draw the wave fronts the reflected wave front so reflected wave front should be perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travel so this is how we complete this figure only three we have to draw so we just have to draw the three wave fronts then a similar question on a figure 6.1 shows an arrangement of a glass prism on figure complete a path uh, through the device and show that the ray emerges in the box so what will happen first the ray is passing along the normal so it will pass straight then it bounces back undergo total return reflection and white passes straight here because it is passing along a normal when it will strike Air to glass uh, bound glass to air boundary. It will again undergo total internal reflection. So this is a path of a ray, incident ray. When it entered this uh, first prism, it first it passed straight because passing along normal. Then it undergo total internal reflection. Stri enter the second prism because passing along the normal. Then undergo total internal reflection and enter the eye of observer. So this was uh, all about the ray diagrams and the completing a wave diagram for block three, which is about the properties of the wave and light, sound, and electromagnetic spectrum.